it's more like a why you probably don't need a gimbal gimbal video. Studio 1.0 and it looks like total chaos. Let me rewind. Bit of a bittersweet moment right now. Heading off to my first studio to clean it out, to say goodbye. So tonight at the studio we're gonna have one last final hurrah in the space. Having a couple friends over, we're gonna watch Bo Burnham's Make Happy, which for me is like a top five anything ever. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, but it's, you know, it's happy sad, happy sad. Oh man, it feels weird just walking in here being like, it's one of the last times I may ever come into this space. I don't think I like that. Whew. Hey, Jesse. Isn't this supposed to be a gimbal video? Or a why not to gimbal video? What are you doing? Show me this sappy move out of your studio mumbo jumbo. Is this all just a ploy to make me watch your vlog? Uh, yes. No. Uh, um, no. It's all gonna make sense, I promise. Back to the studio. See, there's this question that comes up a lot, primarily from people that are new to the video world, which is, I've just got my first camera and I've got all these videos I wanna make, so which gimbal should I buy? And when people message me asking me about what gimbal I use for my stories or what I use for my YouTube videos, they are without fail surprised when I tell them I don't use any. I, I don't own a gimbal. I've never owned a gimbal. I shoot 90 plus percent of everything I do handheld. And then like the other mo little percent is on, on a tripod. So I wanted to take this opportunity to show you just how very much you can do with your hands and your camera. I do need to say, I am not anti-gimbal. I think they are brilliant, magical, wonderful devices that have, without a doubt, changed the filmmaking landscape for the better. There are shots that we can get now that just were not possible, you know, five to 10 years ago. Do you guys have any gimbals I can hold? Bring me all your gimbals. Mine's in my car. Why are all the gimbals not here today? I like gimbals, all right? I like them. But for the most part, they just slow me down for the kind of videos I'm making. So my thesis for this video isn't gimbals are bad, only use your hands. My thesis is you should learn to use your hands first. Oh, I shouldn't, it sounds like master. <laughs> what I think is that you should learn to do as much as you can with the things you already own. And I, I don't know, hopefully you have hands. <laughs> Let's start at the very basics. I think a lot of people, when they start filming, what they notice is, wow, my footage is super shaky. They're pointing it around, they're looking at things, they're walking while they're shooting, and then they get the footage back into the computer and they go, oh my goodness, this is horrible. This is never gonna be a good video. And you think, well, the problem is that the camera's shaking, that I'm walking around and I'm shaking, and a gimbal is gonna be able to keep that camera steady. And you're right, but you're wrong. If you saw my transition masterclass, <laughs> there's this point that I made several times, which is that step one is you have to know your shot. And I think a good percentage of camera shake comes from people not knowing exactly what they want their shot to be. They don't know fully what their composition is gonna be, whether it's gonna be locked off or whether it's gonna be panning or tilting or pushing or pulling or frantic camera that doesn't really know where it wants to land, it's pointing around your hands or you're nervous, maybe you're shaking, that is causing a lot of that camera shake. Now once you step back and you slow down and you think, what do I even want to see in my shot? What is going to happen between these four walls? That you're really able to be deliberate in how you hold the camera and how you move the camera, and better yet, if you move the camera at all. I want to show you the kind of stuff that I am typically creating, the kind of stuff you're used to seeing on my Instagram stories or some of my vloggy or YouTube videos. 
and I want to show you the kind of stuff that you can make just handheld and placing your camera on tables and pillows. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I've definitely been the person, I'm sure you have been the person, that uses a lack of gear as an excuse to not just go out and create something that they want to create. End of an era. End of an era. Alright, I don't want to bore you any longer, so let's jump right into some of my favorite tips for shooting handheld. The first one, we've been talking about this whole video. Know what you're going to shoot. That's fundamental for all film making. This next one is fun because it actually applies to handheld shooting and gimbal shooting. It's something that I learned in my wedding filmmaking days. Now back in 2010, sometime during my wedding filmmaking process, I bought this, my first glide cam. It's a stabilizer. It's basically a gimbal with no motors. So you balance your camera on the top, the weight counteracts it on the bottom, and you walk around. And people used to talk about these the same way they talk about gimbals now, which is like, oh, I just, if only I had that, I'd have smooth footage. But then you got it, and it's like, oh, it's kind of hard to balance, and it's hard to navigate properly. But one of the biggest things that people didn't pay attention to was their footsteps. So whether you're handheld, or you're on a glide cam, steady cam, whatever, or whether you're on a gimbal, you're gonna wanna watch your footsteps because what none of those things are stabilizing is this up, down, Z axis, this vertical axis. So you're gonna wanna crouch down a little bit, bend your knees a little bit, and walk on your toes, on the balls of your feet, not on the heels. And what that's gonna give you is a much steadier, flowier shot that's not gonna have those <laughs> micro jitters. The next thing I like to do is think about my foreground elements because something this close to the lens, if you move the camera just a little bit, is gonna feel like it's going a long way. This is a trick I use all the time, so it's locking up my elbows, get the camera, and by just moving my hips just beyond that foreground element. One of the first things you need to know when you're shooting handheld is that every little movement your body makes can be reflected in that camera, and that can be a good thing, but probably it's a bad thing. You really wanna lock up your shoulders, and I do a lot of the movement just with my torso rather than with my hands itself. And left, and right, and left, and right. I typically reserve my hands for a little bit of tilt or a little bit of pan. If I'm moving forward, my hands are gonna be tilting down a little bit. If I'm moving sideways, my hands are gonna be panning a little bit. And all of this is done without moving your feet. But even with all these tips, it's probably not going to be perfect. And neither are tons of gimbal shots. I'm a big fan of using post stabilization. I'm a Final Cut Pro 10 editor, and the built-in stabilization can work wonders. It can also totally destroy your footage. So playing around with the different settings, the different methods of stabilization, are gonna help you get a much more usable shot. Now the more you use post stabilizer and the more it ruins your shots or makes your shots, you're gonna learn exactly what types of shots the software can and can't handle. And I think you'd be surprised. Sometimes I have shots where I'm like, it's a write-off. It's not going to work. And it's like, wow, did I have a gimbal? And then I have shots where it looks totally stable and I stabilize it and the whole world is warping. Now as many tips as I could give you on how to get better handheld shots, the truth is a lot of this comes from trial and error, from just doing it, looking at the footage, doing it again, just practice, practice, practice. And every time you shoot, and you bring it back into the software, you're gonna run into times where you're like, oh, that shot didn't work. Oh, this is what I wish I had done. So just evaluate your shots and think what you would have done differently, and then try it. Try to do it differently the next time. And you're just gonna learn exactly what movements work, what movements do not work. And if you are going to move the camera, be subtle. You don't need to be having these grand, massive moves. You're not Michael Bay, unless Michael Bay, shout out if you're watching this video. Don't try and get insanely complicated shots that's craning up from crouching to over your head. Well, actually, I take that back. Try and do it, bring it to the computer, see if it works, it probably won't, and then after that, don't try it. All right, and now fun fact, today's video is brought to you by a sponsor. It's a sponsor you've heard me talk about before. It is Storyblocks. Now, Storyblocks is a subscription-based platform for all sorts of things. We've talked about their stock footage and their sound effects, audio, after effects templates, all sorts of these assets that you can use to create a better film, be it for yourself, 
for a client. If you're a production company or an agency, I don't want you to hear this and go, let's get rid of all our gear or let's fire all of our shooters that have their own gear. There are certain types of shots that handheld just really isn't going to get. These are things like hyperlapses or really well choreographed long movements where you don't want it to have that handheld feel. If you're working for like an athletic brand or for a tourism company or for whoever, and maybe there's a specific type of shot you want, don't blow your whole budget buying a gimbal for that one shot. I would consider looking at something like stock footage, look at something like story blocks, and see if you can't use just some supplementary elements in order to fill out your film. As always, I've left a link below in the description so that you can check out their website, see what kind of stuff they have to offer, and if that would be beneficial for you. Okay, I've got one gimbal on my head. Okay. So that's... Nice. Just... Ah! Hey, hi. Uh, if you just finished this video and you enjoyed it in any way, I would appreciate you hitting the like button. If you'd want to see more like this or like other things, uh, I would appreciate you subscribing, hitting that bell so you get notifications. And, uh... Yeah. And I'm sorry if me dropping that gimbal made your heart skip a beat and you died. <laughs> if you're dead, I'm so sorry. Not bad. Not bad. Cinema lenses.